The chair she sat in, like a burnished throne, glowed on a marble, where the glass held up by standards wrought with fruited vines, from which a golden cupidon peeped out, another hid his eyes behind his wing. Double the flames of a seven-branched candelabra, reflecting light upon the table as the glitter of her jewels rose to meet it from satin cases poured in rich profusion. In vials of ivory and colored glass, unstoppered, lurked her strange synthetic perfumes, unguent, powdered or liquid, troubled, confused, and drowned the senses in odors. Stirred by the air that freshened from the window, these ascended in fattening the prolonged candle flames, flung their smoke into the lake area, stirring the patter on the coffered ceiling. Huge sea wood fed with copper, burned green and orange, framed by the colored stone, in which said light a carved dolphin swam. Above the antique mantel was displayed as though a window gave upon the sylvan scene the change of Philomel by the barbarous king so rudely forced. Yet there the nightingale filled all the desert with unviolable voice, and still she cried, and still the world pursues. Jug, jug, to dirty ears, and other withered stumps of time were told upon the walls. Staring forms leaned out, leaning, hushing the room and closed. Footsteps shuffled on the stair. Under the firelight, under the brush, her hair spread out in fiery points, glowed into words, then would be savagely still. My nerves are bad tonight, yes, bad. Stay with me. Speak to me. Why do you never speak? Speak. What are you thinking of? What thinking? What? I never know what you are thinking. Think. I think we are in Rat's Alley, where the dead man lost their bones. What is that noise? The wind under the door. What is that noise now? What is the wind doing? Nothing. Again, nothing. Do you know nothing? Do you see nothing? Do you remember nothing? I remember. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Are you alive or not? Is there nothing in your head? But, oh, that Shakespearean brag. It's so elegant, so intelligent. What shall I do now? What shall I do? I shall rush out as I am and walk the street with my hair down, so? What shall we do tomorrow? What shall we ever do? The hot water at ten, and if it rains, a closed car at four, and we shall play a game of chess, pressing lidless eyes and waiting for a knock upon the door. When Lil's husband got demobbed, I said, I didn't mince my words. I said to her myself, hurry up, please, it's time. Now Albert's coming back. Make yourself a bit smart. He'll want to know what you've done with that money he gave you to get yourself some teeth. He did. I was there. You have them all out, Lil, and get a nice set, he said, I swear. I can't bear to look at you, and no more can't I, I said. And think of poor Albert, he's been in the army four years. He wants a good time, and if you don't give it him, there's others will, I said. Oh, he's there, she said. Something of that, I said. Then I'll know who to thank, she said, and give me a straight look. Hurry up, please. It's time. If you don't like it, you can get on with it, I said. Others can pick and choose if you can't. But if Albert makes off, 
it won't be for lack of telling. You ought to be ashamed, I said, to look so antique, and her only thirty-one. I can't help it, she said, pulling a long face. It's them pills I took to bring it off, she said. She's had five already, and nearly died of young George. The chemist said it would be all right, but I've never been the same. You are a proper fool, I said. Well, if Albert won't leave you alone, there it is, I said. What you get married for if you don't want children? Hurry up, please. It's time. Well, that Sunday Albert was home. They had a hot gammon, and they asked me in to dinner to get the beauty of it hot. Hurry up, please. It's time. Hurry up, please! It's time. Good night, Bill. Good night, Lou. Good night, May. Good night, Tata. Good night. Good night. Good night, ladies. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night. Good night.